Will, you're saying that you don't think Arsenal will challenge for the title. We'll, we'll get onto the Burnley game a little bit later. What is it you? Why don't you think they can do it? What is it about this Arsenal team that you think is worse than last year? So last year that they, uh, they had Grant Jack in the midfield, and he was, I think, the linchpin in what provided security for not only the defense but also initiated the transition. Right. So for me, transitions in football are very important. Right. How quickly you transition from one mode of play to the other depends on how successful you are. And Granit Xhaka had the season of his career for Arsenal last season. Um, you know, was like something like 14 goal contributions, you know, it's some goal, seven assists, something like that. And he really allowed and freed up Odegaard to do what Odegaard is, is, is good at. Which isn't a lot, but he is good at some things. And Xhaka freed him up to do those things. You also had, he also was instrumental in Martinelli not having to be as defensive and could free him up as well on that left-hand side. Thomas Party was fit for a lot most of the season than he has been this season. And those two aspects of that game, Declan Rice, while he's a good player, he's not uh, capable of doing what Granite Jacket did last season. They haven't replaced that eight correctly. And then going forward, uh, Gabriel Jesus and Kedia, those aren't, I don't consider them strikers. I think of them as, you know, midfielders who want to be strikers. And then um, on the wing side, Saka and Martinelli just aren't performing. So can Martinelli, Martinelli and Saka, I think Saka's a great player, best player for, the, for, for Arsenal that they have. I take him at Tottenham and Harvey. Um, I don't think, Mart, I think Martinelli overperformed what his mean is. And unless he gets that type of luxury to be free like he was last season, he won't put up the numbers that he did last year without those goal scoring opportunities. Luckily, they have two great, a great center back pairing in Saliba and um, Gabrielle. But their fullbacks and Ben White, Ben White's great in defense, but he's not great in, in chance creation or pushing forward or doing overlaps or underlaps. So I don't see them um, putting as many goals in the back of the net as they did last season. And when they face top six sides or even teams like Aston Villa, Brighton, um, et cetera, they're going to get outscored. And that's going to cause them to drop more points than they did last season. Mm. I understand that they haven't been quite as good this year so far. Do you not think they can improve? Do you not think they can? Because we saw, for instance, against Sevilla the other night. We all, I don't know how many of you watched it, but we saw Arsenal get back to looking like their best, getting in behind, breaking up. Do you not think that Martinelli and Saka can get back to last year? Because they're tracking towards creating about the same amount of chances as last year. They're tracking towards scoring the same amount of goals as last year. I, um, I agree with you that the football doesn't look as scintillating. It doesn't look as quick. But do you not think it can get better throughout the course of the season? Or do you think what we're seeing now from Arsenal, that's it? This is where Arsenal will remain. I mean, it can always get better. Right? Every team can improve in the future because we don't know what the future is, right? What I'm looking at is I'm not you're, even you're, looking you're, at you're, the... yeah, but you're, Yeah, but you are because you're predicting that they're, gonna, they're not going to get any better from this. Yeah, and the, reason why this I'm predicting, the reason why I'm predicting that is because right now I'm not seeing evidence that I don't think... I think their midfield is performing at its capacity. I don't think there's an extra gear in that midfield. I think there's an extra gear in Saka. I think there's an extra gear possibly in Martinelli if he has that tool that releases him, it frees him up to be creative and to move and to be free and not have to be tracking back and helping out on that left-hand side in the midfield. Um, I think the midfield right now is playing at its capacity. I don't see the midfield getting any better than it is. Therefore, I'm not seeing signs that anything is going to improve because the midfield is the foundation by which the front three can operate, right? And any, for any team, for any club. So with the midfield playing at its capacity, I don't see that the, the, the attacking front line is going to get any better. Um, and why I say that is because I'm not talking about total numbers of shots, right? Martin Odegaard taking five shots from 30 yards out over the bar is not, is not a quality chance, right? It adds to the totals of their shots per game, but it's not a dangerous chance. It's not, you're not testing goalkeepers kicking it over the bar from 30 yards, right? So I'm looking at their chances created, their XAG compared with their uh, MPXG, right? So you take those two statistics sorry, and you sorry, look just at that. Slow you down. Sorry, sorry. No, don't be rude. MPXG, explain that to us. Yeah, non penalty expected goals. So those are that the um, that's the XG that comes from their open play performances. It removes the penalty aspect of it because a penalty. Why, why would you up, do that? Because the penalty adds zero point seven five to the XG, yeah, and that's not about you, what, chance what, creation, right? Well, like from you, open play. Yeah, but generally you get penalties through breaking lines and. Make the teams Sometimes that generally get handballs in the box. Yeah, yeah. Right? But most, if you look at the teams that get the majority of the penalties, it's the teams that are typically the best attacking sides. And most penalties come from set pieces too. 
Right. So, but the, yeah, but again, the most attacking teams get the most set pieces. So that's why I, I've always, I, I don't, I'm not, not popular. I don't know if you're American or Canadian. There's one thing I've always challenged. I, I know in, in, in a lot of your sports, that the, the stats are important and I use stats, but remove, I, I will say this, removing penalties and how penalties are won from football doesn't make, you can't remove a metric like that because when you attack well, you win, our city will get more penalties than Luton this year without a shadow of doubt because they're in the box more. So to remove them and say, we, we've got to remove that from your, the right, way when you you're doing it, I, under, I, I understand what you're saying. But penalties are a part of the game and they happen. But right now, the rate at which Arsenal's getting penalties is not a normal rate, right? They have six penalties in 11 games, right? That's one every other game. Do you think that, that, that Arsenal is going to get 20 something penalties this season? Yeah, no. I, I get right. where you're coming from. I so, understand so, what, what I'm saying is yeah. when you're creating that, when, you, when you're doing statistical analysis, you have to remove the highs and the lows, right? If you want to get to the mean, if you want to see the actual trend, right? So when the only reason why I remove the XG from the penalty aspect is because I'm looking about open play creation, how they're breaking teams down and how their expected assists, right, to goals compares to their non-penalty XG creation, the quality of the chance. Because all XG is is how easy or difficult the shot was, right? Or what the likelihood of scoring should be, right? So mm -hmm. if it's a penalty is 0 0.75 XG because it's a 75% chance of scoring, right? That's why you get that XG. It's not because that chance was worth that. It's because that particular shot, the penalty shot, should be scored 75% of the time, statistically. And I understand that. that The problem is with XG, again, though, it doesn't factor in who's shooting, does it? Exactly. It does. So, yeah. So, Among again, the it's, quality it's, of the chances they're creating. You know, and I, understand, and I understand that. But then you have to look at the quality of the player that's taken. If Saka's in a position to have a shot on goal that it's 75% of the time you score, he's still got a better chance of scoring it than uh, Anthony from Manchester United. So the quality of the Arsenal players needs to be factored in as well. And I understand yeah, where you're you can, coming you can, from. You can get that data from so how, it's, how it's, much a player exceeds their XG. Okay. For example, so, I, I, I want to ask, yeah. ask you a question. So sure. is that how you assess football? Because it sounds to me like you, and I, I mean this word in a, not, not, not in a horrible way, from your stat merchant point of view, like is it just you look at the underlying metrics and that is what you go with? So no, when I'm when I'm watching the game, I don't I don't I don't sit there with my stat sheets, my abacus, like okay, what do we got here? We're going on, okay, we're going on. I, I don't do that, right? I watch the game with my eyes, right? But when you're predicting, right? So I am an analyst by trade. That's what I do. So right. when you're projecting future expectations, whether it be sales or anything else, right? You have to look at the data. The data in context, it helps you to make. Uh, hypothesis is about the future that are reliable, right? A model, a metric by which you can measure things. Mm -hmm. So if you're not using data to project it, what are you doing? I feel it. I feel it in my bones, Terry. Arsenal no, ain't going to get okay, third place. Sorry, one second. One second. I'll come to you. I'm just enjoying this conversation. So I, under, I understand where you're coming from. And I don't think it's about just feeling in your bones because that's what Harry said about winning the league. We're going to yeah. win the league so I'm going to will it to happen. We all know that that... <laughs> When you have no physical control over impacting something, willing it isn't going to work. I totally understand that. And I do think stats play a part because I use statistics. The only issue I have with what you're personally saying is you've just seen two players come out of your team who are heavily, who you've heavily relied upon to, to keeping certain stats and underlying metrics in your favor, i.e. Madison's chance creation. There is no data. There is no anal 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 analyzing you could do that would see Benton Core or the Celso in the Premier League create anywhere near as many chances as Madison, not just has done for you, but has done previously in his career. Equally, you don't have a defender that can cover the ground in the same way that Mickey van der Ven does. And we've seen what happens when Romero plays with Dyer. There is under, so mm. the only th th reason I disagree with you isn't with your synopsis around Arsenal. Where I disagree with you is you haven't used that same logic for why Spurs are not going to massively drop off and maintain third position because, because, you're take, because you're taking away that underlying metric that's made you brilliant this year and you're just saying somebody else will step up. So by that logic, why would you not apply to Arsenal and just say, well, somebody else at some point will click in and replace Xhaka and therefore they'll be as good as last year? What stops you from doing that, my friend? That's a great point. And the, well, the thing that stops me from doing that. So if you, if you, you, you talk about logic a lot, and I, that's one of the things that I like about you is that you, you try to be logical in your, in your, in your positions. Um, the problem with that is, is that you, you, you have to be therefore because there is no evidence either way, right? We don't know how this is, these players are going to work with this manager and how this system is going to be tweaked and or twerked because Pastor Cogwa said, while he doesn't change his his mentality and or his 
uh, principles. He changes the system by changing players in specific p- places, right? So if he wants to get a certain result from a certain way, he'll take a player who's good at out, good at this mm. out and put a player, uh, put a different chess piece in that's good at that. So now that yeah. he has different chess pieces, how will they operate within that Postacago system? We don't have any data on at all. No, so no, I can't say we will, and I can't say we won't. I totally agree. I totally agree. So you have absolutely no idea how no you're going to be. But yeah. yet you remain confident, and you're basing that confidence on what you've seen so far from him and the history of him. History of him. So I don't think yeah. it's unfair, and I know this is why I get called an Arsenal defender. It's not about defending Arsenal. I've said it in every video I've ever done about them. It's about looking for consistency in people's analysis. And there are certain unknowns we don't know we don't know yet how uh el Nene and declan rice look in the middle together as an example they've never played together before they could come together and as a pairing look absolutely amazing i personally Correct. doubt it because we've I seen agree, those yeah. two play before so i don't i don't personally believe that eric dyer coupled with romero for posta coglu it, they're going to suddenly look amazing when they haven't done before but they might do. So that's the only reason. I don't reason think Eric I, Dyer will stay there. Yeah. So look, I think Ashley so Phillips from, stays. From my point of view, look, I understand where you're coming from. I, w- I want to go to a gal now and then we're going to get onto the game. Do, do you agree? Like, what's your response? You don't, we don't have to go into the, 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 the statistical side of it, but in terms of Spurs finishing in front of you and your team just not being good enough and you're not going to basically improve from here, what, what do you say to that as an Arsenal fan? He's basically basing all his evidence on an attack that has been disjointed due to two reasons. One, Gabriel Jesus has been injured for majority of this time, and we've been chopping and changing with that. In addition to that, he's talking about a midfield that we've been chopping and changing. Why is that that all of a sudden Arsenal's can't click into gear? When we see other teams, as the season progresses, they start to they start to get familiarity, they play with each other more often, and you see more consistency from the performances as the season goes on. But your your whole base analysis on why Arsenal is going to be poor is based on our performances to start the season and not factoring in that we've just had our toughest uh, our toughest fixture schedule at this moment in time where we face Man City, we face Chelsea, we face yourselves, and we just come off a, a, a game versus Manchester United. So to analyze the first 11 games and not analyzing who we actually played in comparison to who you've played, which is some of the bottom Same teams. teams. In, no, you've beaten some of the bottom teams. Let's be honest. We haven't played some of the teams at the bottom of the table besides who? Bournemouth? Who else have you played? Sheffield United. Um, we've had the same difficulty we schedule. Played, we haven't played Burnley. We haven't played Luton Town. So my point is, our fixture schedule can make it seem like, oh, Arsenal is struggling a lot more. But really and truly, some of these tougher games are happening at this moment in time. And it also uh, is a factor in why we've been performing the way we've been performing. But yeah, I think I think overall, we have not been attacking as well. And we've not been we've not had the same level of consistency to start the season for one of two reasons. One, we have to man. We have to find a way to uh, to manage as we're getting a new midfield. Jaka's gone. I I agree with you there. Jaka, we are missing Jaka at certain times. But where we have been better is our control of the games. I don't feel like any a majority of these games that we are winning. I don't feel like the other team has as many shots on our goal. I don't feel like the other team has as many opportunities on, on us. I don't feel like um, when we when we look at the stats and the actual underlying numbers, we don't face as many shots as some of the other teams in the league. We're one of the best defenses, and we hold on. To, even though our midfield has not clicked into gear, our midfield hasn't been our biggest issue. Our biggest issue has been the chance creation and the finishing in our final third, and that can that can change. That can change strictly based off of two things: one, fitness and availability, and two. Our players are our, our players kicking into gear and having more time to play with each other. And as we see with Manchester City, teams can grow as the season goes on. But apparently, when it's Arsenal, it, they can never improve throughout the season. Yeah, no, a- anybody can improve throughout the season. I've never said that, right? Uh, what I'm saying, I'm talking about probabilities, right? So likelihoods. <laughs> what is the likelihood? What is the Bayesian analysis of that, right? The one when I take like, a multiple. Right. What's the likelihood of a team who has their first starting striker, their starting midfielder, back fit in the team, and when you don't have one, when Gabriel you, Jesus has played, had multiple players out throughout the season. Hold That's on, one. On. Number two, you, what's the what's the chances of somebody improving when they uh, when they have more familiarity with that player? We have two new players, and we have at least what two new players in that starting midfield, and that's going to make a difference every every game. You, well, if you're counting Havertz as a new starting player, that's fine. And can Havertz is Havertz forever bad? No. But what I can do is I have seen Havertz play in the in the Premier League for multiple seasons. There's a there's a sator, there's a d- statistical track, historical track of him playing. Yes. Right. Same with Dyer at the back. S- same with Dyer at the back, which is why I don't think Postecoglou will play Dyer at the back. I think he'll it's end also up in attack. No, I, look, boys, I don't want to shut this down because also I, under I, this I, manager, we don't I, have Will. Will, do you know what it is? I I I don't disagree with 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 your your opinion i just just i just do believe that you're being you're, you're not applying the same logic to your own club as you are doing arsenal and I, by the way i get that 
because you're meant to hate them, but you're you're doing it with facts. Mm -hmm. like it becomes harder when you do it with feeling. It makes sense. I want to go to some super chats here. 